Divine Truth Assistance Group Group Assistance Sessions – Putting Principles of Divine Truth into Action This recording is from the Developing My Will to Love Group and is part of the Education and Love series. In the Session 1 Group Feedback Presentation, Jesus gives group feedback regarding acknowledging the feeling that we want to sin, be unloving and untruthful, and encourages us to examine why this is so and whether we really want to change. Recorded on the 6th of March 2016 in New Seville, Queensland, Australia. All right. Many of the others of you have crossed off your uh, questions because obviously they've been answered in the discussion this morning and so forth, so that's good. But some of you haven't and you've left these questions on here. To be frank with you, the majority of the questions um, I, I feel are the same questions many of you have been asking me for years and years and years and not listening. So I don't know what I can do about that. Um, I'm not certainly not going to answer them again the same way as I have in the past. The, the other thing is that many of you are trying to make me responsible for your process, right? Rather than actually look at the reality. So what I would like to do is focus you back on the conversation I had earlier with Jenny. You remember I talked to her about the feeling of acknowledging the feeling of I want to. I want to do the wrong thing, right? Just lock that. So let's, this is our subject for our group feedback. Okay. Now why am I raising this issue with you? Because what I, I see, the, what most of you do is you don't believe you want to do the wrong thing. You believe at some level you, you're good, right? You want to believe that. At some level, you're good. Now, I'm not saying you're all bad. I'm just saying that we have this image of ourselves that we want to maintain, right? And so, so we don't face up to truth when we want to maintain an image of ourselves. The key in the soul is to find out the soul's true desires, right? We want to know what it really wants. Because you can't change what it really wants unless you know what it really wants. Now, if what it really wants happens to be out of harmony with love and truth, then you have a choice, don't you? You have a choice to work through the emotions that make you feel that way, to release them. You have a choice to also act differently. You have those choices available to you. But if you cannot acknowledge that what, what you want to do is actually out of harmony with love, then you're never going to even begin the process. You follow? Now, you remember in the conversation with Jenny, I told her that she wants to harm Graham. Now, she's, she's going, no, 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 I don't want to harm Graham. And I'm going, yes, 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 you want to harm Graham. You've harmed him for many years now. Um, you want to harm him. You, you, you want to harm him because of childhood issues. And she's going, no, I, that's not true. I, the feeling I have is I want to do the right thing by Graham. And then I say to her, well, you're harming Graham, and, and Graham knows you're harming him, and you know you're harming him. And she goes, well, I'll leave him then. And I'm going, What? Why is that the choice? I thought you loved him. Why would you want to leave him if you love him? And you go, well, if I love him I, I, and I'm acting badly towards him, I should leave him. And I say, no. If you love him and you're acting badly towards him, you should stay and treat him better. <laughs> That's what you should do if you really love him. right? And, and you're saying you want to. So Jen was saying to me, she wants to treat him better, and I'm saying, sorry, Jen, no, you would rather leave than treat him better. And many of you are in this state where you'd rather do something just as unloving than do the loving thing. And that's because you want to. <laughs> All right? Many of you are also willing to blame the other person. You remember in the conversation with Jen, he, she was saying, yeah, Graham has this emotion in him that he's willing to give away his will, and so I take up the slack. And I'm going, no, you want him to give away his will. You wouldn't, have, you wouldn't even like being with a man who doesn't give away his will. 
It starts with you, not with the other person when you're unloving. But many of you I see doing the same thing with this. When you treat another person unlovingly, you have a tendency to want to blame them for your unloving treatment of them. They allowed me to do it. So surely they are responsible, partly responsible for my behaviour. No, they're not. You're responsible for your behaviour. Even if everyone in the world wanted you to abuse them, if you were loving, you wouldn't choose to. You follow? You wouldn't choose to. Even if they decided to put a gun to your head and said, abusers, abusers, you'd say, no, if I'm going to have to die first, I'm not going to. <laughs> That's what you would do. But let's face it, most of you don't need a gun to your head to abuse somebody. You just need a little tiny trigger from them that you then think, ah, oh, you know, my, now's my justification. I can go ahead and harm this person. So what I want to address with you now is this issue of dealing with the I want to do something out of harmony with love. Let's say what out of harmony with love really is. It is sin. So really what we're saying is I want to sin. I want to do the unloving thing. I want to do the untruthful thing. I want to. There's a feeling in me that causes me to feel like I'm justified doing it or that I blame someone else for doing it or I even deny that I'm doing it while I'm doing it or I lie about it afterwards or whatever it is but in the end I want to do it. That's our main problem. It's what we want to do that is our main problem. The main pain that we experience through the law of compensation which is a law trying to correct our desire to sin is the result of our desire to sin. Like the pain is the result of our desire to sin. The suffering is our des desire to sin for a long time. <laughs> right? And we'll, we'll talk more about that in a few days' time. So there's a feeling in me that I want to sin. What do I do about it? So stop judging it. What do I do about it? Now obviously... The, the choice isn't to somehow heavy ourselves into not sinning because that doesn't work, does it? You know, every Christian on the planet's tried that and it doesn't really work out most of the time, right? Every Muslim on the planet's tried that and a lot of times that doesn't work out for them either. They're trying to not sin but they do engage sin from God's perspective. So the real problem is rooting from the soul, like pulling a weed. You know, when you pull out a weed, if you break off and leave the root there, you know, most of the time the weed will come up again, will it not? So what we need to do is pull out the root of the weed and then the weed will be no more. Uh, and, and if we get rid of all the seeds of the weed on top of that, then it will probably won't grow again, right? And this is what we need to do with what's going on in our soul. We first need to root out from our soul, pull out from our soul, the desire to sin. On whatever issue it is. Do you follow? So let, let's say the issue is, I just want to treat Graham badly. He's, he's open to absorbing it. He's not going to hit me back. So if I treat him badly, I'm going to probably get away with it. Right? And particularly if you're a woman, you probably will get away with it with Graham if you treat him badly, which is sad, but, but that's his current state at the moment, right? Now, if I'm a woman who wants to harm Graham and want to treat him badly, then, then I have a desire to sin inside of me. It's got nothing to do with Graham's condition. It's got everything to do with my desire to harm him. <laughs> I have a desire to harm him. What I need to do firstly is be honest <laughs> about the fact that I want to <laughs> harm him. It's a, there's a need in me to harm him. I just feel the urge to harm him. Right? I need to be honest about that. Right? The last assistance group, I often heard of a group of women surrounding one man and there was a condescension after attack, after condescension towards that one man. And all of those women in that group all had a desire to harm the man. And I observed that time after time after time, particularly in the second group in the first assistance group in 2014. They wanted to harm him. They felt justified harming him. They felt like... They were doing the right thing even. That's the feeling inside of them. It was out of harmony with love. 
therefore a sin, so they wanted to sin. They wanted to. What's going to change that? Changing that means getting rid of this desire to sin from inside of us. The desire to sin comes from emotional justifications inside of us, right? That's where it comes from. So we've got to find the emotional reason why <coughs> we feel like we want to <coughs> sin. We want to damage somebody. Right? So what we would have to do firstly is feel that we want to and be honest about it. Then what we need to do is feel about why we want to. Does that make sense? Now that's where the majority of us do not want to go. We don't even want to know why. That's why we're content to keep on sinning. That's why we're content to continue to be unloving. We don't even want to know why we do something that's out of harmony with love. And I'm suggesting to you that if you were truly sincere with the exercise of your will to become more loving and truthful, you would want to know what the real reason is. You'd want to discover it. You'd desire it, wouldn't you? Rather than just leaving the situation or running away from the person or whatever, your only option would be to discover this particular problem uh, and deal with it. Deal with it so that it's not there anymore. Now, it's this desire to sin that needs to be discovered and the desire to sin comes from, obviously, what we've said already, emotion. So what we've got to do is define, find the emotion. Now, we've also said that for many of us, this desire comes from our childhood. Something happened in our childhood that causes us to want to do these things. But it's not only just our childhood, is it? Because there are a number of different influences upon our soul. right? Belief systems that come from external sources that are influence our decision to hold on to these particular emotions and not only to hold on to them but to not but to completely justify them and and in and in this case in your case Jen what's happening is you're in a rage with men inside of yourself and that rage justifies holding on to the underlying emotions and this is the problem is that we frequently are justifying the holding on to emotion. And the world supports us to do such a thing, right? By telling us a lot of things. There's external influences. There's the society we live in which externally influences us to believe certain things about emotion, about abuse, about all sorts of things, right? Then there's the family we come from that has influenced us to, to believe a whole set of things. And then there's a whole heap of spirits who have passed over, who have all had similar kinds of abuses in their own life, similar kinds of rage that they haven't dealt with, and they want you to, to hurt Graham too. right? So you've got spirit influence that you're allowing to influence you to, into hurting, hurting him as well. There's also belief systems that actually are inside of you about rage. You feel that certain types of rage are justified. Right? And, and particularly when somebody's harmed a child, that's the time. Yeah, and society believes that too, don't they? If you look at it, like you, any time a person feels like a child's getting hurt, now's the time to get nasty, right? And this is how most people feel. So there's, there's the conditioning that's occurred over many... centuries of belief systems that have occurred that are now being imposed on this particular generation of people, all influencing the soul, not finding the emotion and not releasing it, right? Now, last night I talked to Joshua, didn't I, about the issue about uh, child abuse, basically. Yep. And, and Joshua, while he was honest with me, he still doesn't see how much rage he's in justifying his behaviour. So do you understand that, Joshua? You, you get what I'm saying? You're, you're actually, you actually feel that it's justified taking out terrible acts upon children because you yourself has been harmed in the past by somebody else. 
And this is a thing that you're going to need to face at some point. But many of you are doing this with many different things, not just severe things like child abuse or abusing another person. You're, you're doing it with things where, where you, know, you just feel justified feeding an addiction, justified having your facade propped up, justified demanding certain things from people, justified when you get afraid, justified that you are allowed to get angry under those circumstances and those kind of things. These are all actions taken because we're unwilling to see that we want to do that rather than be loving. So can you see the first step of really acknowledging a problem is to acknowledge that actually we want that particular thing to happen. Now that breaks down one thing inside of us if we come to recognise these things and that is this thing called your facade. Why are we addicted to our facade? What does our facade do for us? Felix? Um, it protects me from uh, not feeling my fear and it, it, uh, it um, makes myself and others feel about me the way I want them to. Yeah, I, yep, I think there's more to it than that, but go on. That's, that's a good start. S Sandra? Oh. I want to appear more loving. Like I just want other people to believe that I'm good. And I'm justifying that I can just be whatever I am as long as I've got a face that's got a smile on it. That's well, that's a start, but actually it starts with this other problem, actually. Can I say what it is? I want to believe that I'm good. And then it goes to, I want others to believe that I'm good as well. You follow? It starts with you wanting to believe you're good. Now, that obviously comes from some kind of underlying emotion that you don't believe you're actually that for good. And so you want to create a facade that you're good rather than just be good. And can we ask ourselves, why do I want to, why do I want to believe that I'm good? Like, why do I want to... No, that's not the question to ask yourself. The question to ask yourself is, why do I want to lie to myself? Because <laughs> a facade is a lie to yourself. Why do you want to keep lying to yourself? The very, one of the very worst lies you can do is to lie to yourself. <laughs> you know why? Because you're also lying to God. Well, it's not just because of that, Maxine. So what else? Just straight behind you. Yep. Well, it prevents you from feeling your emotions. It does, but it's not just that. If we go down to Kate, straight through. Okay. Kate. While you're maintaining that lie, no change is possible for you. That's right. While you that's why it's the worst thing you can do to yourself. You're not going to ever grow. You're not going to ever change. You're not ever going to become better. You're not ever going to, you know, there's no exponential growth available to you anymore because you're lying to yourself. It's one of the worst things you can do to yourself. Many of you are addicted to this facade. Addicted to just lying to yourself all the time about how you really are instead of actually coming face to face with what you really want to do. Right. There are times when you really like to kill somebody, but if you could get away with it, right? There's times when you'd really like to punch somebody in the nose. For many of you ladies, it's like there's times when you like to punch them in the nose. Instead of punching them in the nose, you, you want to plot their plot a series of revenges instead. Many times you feel that way with different people. Right. We need to be honest about what's inside the desire to sin. We, we can't change the desire to sin unless we are honest about the fact that it exists. And lying to yourself, worst thing you can do. Worst thing you can do. It stops you from any change in this regard. And this is why I love truth so much. Because I've learned a long time ago, years ago, you know, 2000 or so, years ago, that lying to myself 
I observed the lies that everybody around me were telling themselves all the time. And honestly, the biggest thing I felt was, if I, keep, if I lie to myself like they are doing, I'm not going to end up in a very good place. I'm just not. All right. And what I would like many of you to try doing is stop lying to yourself about what you really feel. It blocks God from sharing truth with you. Right. God just sees, oh, this person just wants to maintain a figment of their imagination about themselves. So what does God do? Exactly what you want. <laughs> God's laws, of course, are trying to break down that facade. And God is trying to help you to break down the facade by other events occurring. But, but while you're lying to yourself, it's highly unlikely you'll even tell yourself the truth about those events. Isn't it? So this is a major problem, I feel, for many of you. We need to come to see that we want to sin and come to see how we want to before we can address any of the other issues as to why we want to, which is all to do with the emotions that are within us and the willingness to feel those particular emotions. Most of us are at the point where we don't want to feel those emotions. Hence, we go and do some other things, like we create a thing called willpower to try and overcome them, right? So instead of using a will, which is actually rooting out the emotion, remember, pulling it out by the roots, we don't want to do that. We just want to leave it there and then make it appear like it's not there. Good luck with that. It hasn't worked very well now. Like, and particularly if someone's emotionally sensitive like myself, I can feel it anyway. What's the point? And, and if you want a relationship with God, who is the source of all truth, which of course if you really want to get educated, you're going to want to have this relationship with God, God can see everything you have inside of you. What's the point of lying about it? There's no point about lying about that either. Graham. Would you say that willpower is the opposite of will? Yeah. It's like what you do when you don't have the will. That's correct. Yeah, we'll talk more about that in a few, three, day, three or four days' time. But it is. So opposite to will. And yet we convince ourselves that we're using our will when we're really using willpower. That's right. We're using our mind to overcome the effects of our will in the soul by using willpower. So considering it's the opposite, it's actually counterproductive. Very counterproductive. And in fact, it creates an illusion. It actually assists the illusion of the facade. You can see why, can't you? you go, I'm doing something about this. I'm doing something about this. I'm better now because I'm doing something about this when we're not doing anything about it in, at the soul level. We haven't changed anything at the soul level. right? But we've convinced ourselves we have because now tr we're trying. So, so this is where many people... This is why the Catholic Church is such a big organisation on the planet. It's learned to manipulate the guilt of people. It's learned to, to tell them that they're guilty and then to tell them that they've got to use their willpower to overcome what they're guilty about and then they've got to assist them to do that through a whole heap of processes, some of which involves my own sacrifice. So, so, and, and this will help them, is what, what the belief is. It, it will not. Right? And the reason why these kind of organisations expand to these global organisations is because they're feeding the addiction of the person. The addiction of the person is to maintain their facade about themselves, to s tell themselves that everything's all right when it's not. We are far better off going, no, everything's not all right <laughs> and I need to correct what's wrong than we are to tell ourselves everything's all right when it's not. We need to be a lot more honest with ourselves rather than lying to ourselves. Does that make sense? So that's what I wanted to talk to you about with regard to giving you some feedback on this matter. I feel that I feel for many of you, you're so worried about layer of this emotion and layer of that emotion and layer of this thing and what, what I've got to do from my childhood and all these kind of things, when the real thing you need to be worried about, if you're going to worry about anything, is to look at this, the, this concern that actually you have a desire to sin that's inside of you, do you want to actually change that? Do you want to discover the ways in which you want that? 
or are you just going to skip over it? What do you want to do about this particular thing, this particular problem? That's where you'd be better off spending your time. You follow? Another reason why you're better off spending your time in that location is because every time you sin, you will have more pain and suffering. All right, so, so obviously, if you want to improve your pleasure and happiness and decrease your pain and suffering, sinning is not a good idea. All right? So finding the reasons why you sin is a great thing to do. But you need to do it without judgment. Right? You just need to access what's really going on. Monique, thanks. Um, so what you're, what you're saying is if we, we need to at least want to see the truth about ourselves, about where we're sinning and where we're, what we're blind to... Um, so in some things, like a lot of things, I don't see that it's a sin. In my heart, I don't feel it's a sin. And the world doesn't either. So that supports your feeling. Yep. So then I need to educate myself to find out which, which things are sin, like being in facade all the time. Yeah. Feels good. But, but it's a sin. But it's a sin. It's hey? not going to... And by the way... If you were truly sensitive at your emotional well, level, it wouldn't feel good either. Yeah. It would feel like you're lying to everyone around you. How does that feel? Y yeah. It, it feels pretty bad, doesn't it? Like, if you, if you realise that, oh, I'm so addicted to this facade, I want this facade, this facade's real, but if you were truly sensitive, you'd be going, actually, I'm lying to every single person around me that I've ever been, ever been with, ever had a relationship with, ever interacted with, I'm lying to all of them. And then you realise that actually while you lie to them, they never get to see the real you either. So you're actually preventing a false you, hoping to have a relationship through the false you with other people. Right? That's not going to be very successful, right? So you don't even realise that in your facade. So what you're, what you're saying is in, we, we might see it, I might see intellectually that it's a sin, but I haven't felt the no, sin yet. definitely not. S sorry? You definitely haven't felt it's a sin yet, yes. Correct, yes. So, so I see it, but I don't feel it yet. So I start to educate myself and pray about it. Yes. To want to become more sensitive to actually then feeling that it's a sin. Yes. And that will then develop some desire to want to change around. No. no. You've got to see that you want the facade first. Why do you want it? See, that, that's the area of discovery. Why do you want it? You obviously believe there's good things from it. That's your belief systems that are in your soul. Emotions in your soul right now believe that there are good things about your facade. It's a good thing you believe it to be a good thing. I'm asking you to look at why you believe it's a good thing. What emotions in you, inside of you, tell you that it's a good thing? Not just accept, not just um, um, like owning, yeah, I like it and it feels really good. But then the next step is, well, why do I like it and why does it feel good? And there's reasons. And it. also be aware of the pain and suffering you're causing while you're in it. Any person that has a relationship with you, Monique, is not having a relationship with you. Now, now if you were on the receiving end of that, how would that feel? I wouldn't want to have a relationship with that person. Correct. Feel shitty, like yeah, you you're trying to, uh, you know, it's a like a, oh, well, I was going to say facade, but it's, it's a, like it's a, a cloudy. It's a lie. <laughs> Still not. Yeah. A facade is a lie. You know, it's like it's like it's like having a building that's really rough and putting a pretty face on the top and and selling it, and then somebody. Else, this is what you're doing to yourself. You're putting a pretty face on the front, selling it. You're selling yourself this way. And then somebody walks in the door and walks inside and goes, gee whiz, how shocking is it in here? Well, that's right? yeah. And then they get upset about that, and deservedly so, because you did the painting on the wall in the first place and put the pretty facade on the thing. Do you see what I'm saying? 
you are going to cause damage not only for yourself and your own life but also to the lives of others while you present this facade to other people and and unless you see that as a sin like damaging other people being unloving to other people not telling the truth to other people is a sin unless you see it as one and see that you want to sin you want this facade why what do you think it gives you what false beliefs do you have about it you know, there are the things you need to investigate for yourself, and it will be different for each person. There will be different reasons for each one. Well, when, when you say the building and, and walking inside, I don't feel that anyone would like the inside. Ah, yes. I, it's yes, interesting what you discover even just with a little bit of contemplation. Yes, like why would anyone like what's, what's inside? Why wouldn't you like the See, God wants what's face? inside. Yeah. So you don't even have any... God wants what's inside. God, God created what's inside, right? God wants what's inside. God wants you to be in a state of truth. And, and you're afraid of being your real self, right? And there, there's some of your justifications, being afraid of how other people will see the real you, how other people will judge the real you. It's better that they judge a facade than the real you. Uh, there's a whole heap of motivations, but, but unless you feel about them, you won't discover them, right? Yeah. 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 If we go straight behind to Paul. Thank you. Um, is that a bit like um, burying our talents as well, the sin of not being ourself? And, yep. And, uh, 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 what and Paul's referring to is an illustration I gave in the first century about everyone being given different talents. And, and one guy gets one talent, and he buries it in the backyard so that he doesn't have to do anything with it. Right? And that's what many of us are doing by creating a facade. Yep. Go on with your question, sorry. Well, I was just sort of checking about the sin in that, is that God's given us this gift and, and I'm burying it or hiding it yep. and don't have the courage to show the world this gift which Correct. God has given. Correct. Yeah. So from God's perspective, he wants you to be your real self. He wants you to discover your real self and be your real self. So what are we doing? We're creating a whole 30 hours on helping you do that, <laughs> which is our next presentation to you in May and June. And then, and then to help you with the aspect of understanding sin and, and what's happening with sin, we've created a whole 30 hours for that. And then to help you with understanding God's laws so that you understand what is in harmony with love and what's out of harmony with love, we've created another 30 hours for that. And then to help you understand how to remove the sin, remove this emotion out of you, the one that causes you to sin, we've created another 30 hours for that. And then to help you understand how to engage God's laws that have no negative effects. There are a whole heap of laws that have no negative effects, only positive effects when you know them then to do that we've we have created another 30 hours for that can you see why we've cre created the program for you to help you go through this process of understanding what's really going on but what i'm getting at with this discussion with you is start with the fact that you the truth the truth is many times you want to sin let's be honest about it let's see it as it is we want to sin, we want to do the wrong thing, we want to do the unloving thing from God's perspective, right? and find out why. That's my advice to you as a group. All right? All right, well, let's have a break for 10 minutes, and then we'll just do a short review and homework. <laughs>